Deep in the heart of Hawaii's Big Island sits one of the world's most active volcanoes, Kilauea. Located within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the southeastern slope of the massive Mauna Loa volcano, Kilauea has been putting on a spectacular show for millions of years. Since December 23, 2024, it has been intermittently erupting within the summit caldera, sending towering fountains of lava up to 1,000 feet into the air. This shield volcano, standing 4,091 feet above sea level at coordinates 19.421 degrees north and 155.287 degrees west, covers about 14% of the Big Island's land area and continues to grow with each eruption. Kilauea started as a submarine volcano, gradually growing larger through underwater eruptions of alkali basalt lava before emerging from the sea with explosive eruptions about 50,000 to 100,000 years ago. The Hawaiian name, Kilauea, means, spewing, or, much spreading, a perfect description for a volcano that has covered nearly 90% of its surface with lava flows in just the last 1,000 years. Native Hawaiians have recorded this extraordinary volcanic activity in their oral traditions long before the first European missionary, Reverend William Ellis, visited the summit in 1823. To understand Kilauea, you have to understand that this isn't just any volcano. This is the home of Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes and fire. According to Hawaiian tradition, Pele lives in Halamomo Crater, the fire pit within Kilauea's summit caldera called Kalua Pele. When the mountain erupts, locals say Pele is angry, dancing, or simply expressing her creative power through molten rock. But Kilauea is more than mythology. It's a geological wonder that has fascinated scientists for over a century. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, perched on the western rim of the caldera at Uwakahuna Bluff, has been monitoring this restless giant since 1912. Scientists come from around the world to study Kilauea because it's incredibly active, relatively safe to observe, and offers unique insights into how volcanoes work. What makes Kilauea special isn't just its constant activity, it's the type of volcano it is. Kilauea is what scientists call a shield volcano, built up by countless layers of fluid lava flows rather than explosive eruptions. Think of it like a warrior's shield lying flat on the ground, with gentle slopes extending in all directions. This shape forms because Hawaiian lava is typically hot and runny, flowing easily across the landscape instead of piling up in steep-sided cones. For many years, geologists thought Kilauea was just a smaller version of its giant neighbor, Mauna Loa. After all, when you look at the Big Island from above, Kilauea appears to be nothing more than a bulge on Mauna Loa's southeastern flank. But research over the past few decades has shown that Kilauea has its own completely separate magma system, extending more than 60 kilometers deep into the Earth. It's its own mountain, with its own personality and its own timeline. Current research indicates that Kilauea's first lava flows erupted onto the ocean floor between 210,000 and 280,000 years ago making it the second youngest volcano in the Hawaiian island chain. The oldest exposed rocks on the volcano's surface, found in the Helena Fault Scarps, are only about 50,000 to 70,000 years old. That might sound ancient, but in geological terms, Kilauea is practically a baby. What's remarkable about Kilauea is how little old rock you can find on its surface. Only about 10% of the volcano's surface consists of rock older than 1,000 years. The other 90% has been covered by lava flows younger than 1,000 years, and about 20% of those flows are less than 200 years old. This constant resurfacing makes Kilauea a living laboratory for understanding volcanic processes. Around 1,000 years ago, something dramatic happened at Kilauea's summit. After a massive eruption called the Ailai eruption, which lasted about 60 years and sent lava flows cascading across the landscape, the summit area collapsed. This collapse created the present-day caldera, a huge depression measuring about 3.5 kilometers by 3 kilometers and dropping 600 meters deep. Hawaiian oral tradition actually records this event. Traditional chants tell of Hiaka, Pele's sister, digging a deep pit after the great eruption. While the stories are wrapped in mythology, they accurately describe the caldera's formation through dramatic collapse. Scientists have confirmed that the volume of lava erupted during the Ailai eruption matches the size of the collapsed caldera, evidence that this ancient collapse really did happen the way the stories suggest. After the Great Collapse, Kilauea entered what scientists call the Observatory Shield Building Period. 
For about 400 years, steady eruptions gradually filled in the collapsed caldera and built up a new shield of hardened lava. But around 1500, the volcano's behavior changed dramatically. From about 1510 to 1790, Kilo Weyer entered a 300-year period of explosive eruptions, as confirmed by radiocarbon dating of the Kinakakoi Tephra. During this time, the volcano shot ash and volcanic debris hundreds of meters into the sky, spreading volcanic material across the island. These weren't the gentle, flowing eruptions we often see today, these were violent explosions that could be deadly to anyone nearby. The most famous of these explosive periods occurred in 1790, when a catastrophic steam explosion killed part of a Hawaiian army. The warriors were part of Keua Kuula's forces, the last Big Island chief to resist Kamehameha I's rule. Their footprints, preserved in volcanic ash, can still be seen today in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, serving as a stark reminder of the volcano's deadly power. When Reverend William Ellis became the first European to visit Kilauea's summit in 1823, he began the first written documentation of the volcano's eruptions. What he found was remarkable, an almost continuously active lava lake bubbling away in Halamomo Crater. Throughout the 19th century and into the early 20th century, visitors could count on seeing a glowing lake of molten rock when they peered over the crater's edge. This period of nearly constant activity made Kilauea famous worldwide. Mark Twain visited in 1866 and wrote about his amazement at seeing the fire pit with its ever-changing lake of lava. But this wasn't just a tourist attraction, it was a unique opportunity for scientists to study an active volcano up close. In 1924, Kilauea reminded everyone of its explosive potential. The active lava lake that had been bubbling in Halamomo Crater for decades suddenly drained away. Days later, the crater erupted in a series of violent steam explosions that lasted for 17 days. These weren't typical volcanic eruptions, they were caused by groundwater coming into contact with hot volcanic rock, creating massive steam explosions. Rocks weighing many tons were hurled as far as a kilometer from the crater. The explosions enlarged Halamomo Crater to a depth of 400 meters, creating the dramatic pit that visitors see today. Photographer T.A. Jagger captured some of the only photographs of these explosive eruptions, showing towering columns of ash and steam rising from the crater. The establishment of the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory in 1912 marked the beginning of modern volcano monitoring. Thomas Jagger, a geologist from MIT, convinced local businessmen and eventually the U.S. government to fund permanent scientific observation of Hawaiian volcanoes. This was revolutionary. Never before had scientists maintained continuous monitoring of an active volcano. Today's monitoring involves an incredible array of high-tech instruments. Seismometers detect the tiny earthquakes that occur when magma moves underground. Tilt meters measure ground deformation so sensitive they can detect changes smaller than the width of a human hair. Gas sensors monitor the chemical composition of volcanic emissions, while thermal cameras track temperature changes in the lava. Scientists also use satellite imagery to track volcanic activity from space. These satellites can measure ground swelling, detect heat signatures, and even monitor gas emissions from hundreds of miles above the Earth. All this data gets processed in real time, allowing scientists to track the volcano's behavior continuously and issue warnings when necessary. On January 3, 1983, Kilauea began what would become one of the longest volcanic eruptions in recorded history. What started as a series of fissure eruptions along the Middle East Rift Zone eventually focused on a single vent that scientists named Puyu. This eruption would continue almost non-stop for 35 years, finally ending in 2018. During its early years, Puyu produced spectacular lava fountains that built a cinder and spatter cone 255 meters high. The eruption went through different phases, sometimes producing towering fountains of lava, other times sending slow-moving flows toward the ocean. By the time it ended, this single eruption had produced 3.5 cubic kilometers of new lava and resurfaced 123 square kilometers of land. One of the most spectacular aspects of Kilauea's eruptions is watching lava flow into the ocean. When 2,000 degree molten rock hits cold seawater, the reaction is explosive. Massive clouds of steam shoot hundreds of feet into the air, while the lava instantly cools and shatters into black sand. This process, called literal explosion, creates new land as the lava builds up along the shoreline. But these ocean entries come with serious hazards. The steam clouds contain hydrochloric acid formed when seawater breaks down in the intense heat. 
The acid rain that falls from these clouds can cause severe burns and breathing problems. Scientists call this LAZE, a combination of lava and haze, and it's just one of many dangers associated with active volcanism. In early 2018, Kilauea's 35 year long eruption took a dramatic turn. After decades of relatively predictable activity at Puyu, new fissures began opening in the Lower East Rift Zone, in residential areas where people had built homes on old lava flows. What followed was one of the most destructive eruptions in Hawaii's recorded history. The 2018 eruption opened several fissures that cut across residential neighborhoods in Leilani Estates, releasing lava and clouds of sulfur dioxide gas. Lava fountains reached heights of 200 feet, while massive flows destroyed more than 700 homes and covered thousands of acres with new rock. The eruption forced thousands of people to evacuate, and many lost everything they owned. At the same time, dramatic changes were happening at Kilauea's summit. The long-standing lava lake in Halamomo Crater drained away as magma moved underground toward the Lower East Rift Zone. Then the summit began collapsing in a series of dramatic events that geologists had never witnessed before at Kilauea. From May through August 2018, Kilauea's summit experienced more than 60 collapse events, each one equivalent to a magnitude 5 earthquake. These weren't typical earthquakes caused by tectonic activity. They were caused by the crater floor dropping as magma drained from underground chambers. Each collapse event dropped the crater floor a little deeper, eventually creating a pit more than 500 meters deep. The collapse was so dramatic that it could be felt across the Big Island, damaging buildings and triggering landslides. Scientists monitoring the volcano had never seen anything like it. Previous collapses at Kilauea had happened over longer periods, but this one occurred in distinct, measurable stages that allowed researchers to study the process in unprecedented detail. Since December 23, 2024, Kilauea has been intermittently erupting within the summit caldera, with episodic activity that turns on and off every few days or weeks. Recent eruptions have produced lava fountains over 1,000 feet tall, similar to activity not seen since the early years of the Puyu eruption in the 1980s. These eruptions create several types of hazards. Sulfur dioxide gas released during eruptions can mix with atmospheric moisture to create volcanic smog, or VOG, which causes breathing problems and eye irritation. During active periods, the volcano can emit up to 83,000 tons of sulfur dioxide per day. Another unique hazard is Pele's hair, strands of volcanic glass that form when gas bubbles in lava burst at the surface. These hair-like strands can be carried more than 10 miles from the eruption site by strong winds, causing skin and eye irritation to anyone who comes in contact with them. Scientists have long debated what causes Hawaiian volcanism. The leading theory involves what's called a mantle plume, a column of hot rock that rises from deep within the Earth's mantle. As the Pacific plate moves northwest over this stationary hotspot, it creates the chain of Hawaiian islands and seamounts. But recent research has complicated this picture. Some scientists now think the heat source might be a pancake-shaped layer of abnormally hot rock in the Earth's crust, rather than a deep mantle plume. This layer is only about 650 kilometers beneath the surface, much shallower than previously thought. The debate continues, but what's clear is that Hawaiian volcanoes represent something unique in global volcanism. The people of Hawaii have learned to live with active volcanism as part of daily life. Emergency management agencies maintain detailed evacuation plans for different eruption scenarios. Scientists issue daily updates on volcanic activity, and residents check these reports the same way people elsewhere check weather forecasts. Kilauea's current eruption shows the volcano's typical pattern of episodic activity, with episodes lasting hours to days followed by quiet periods. Episode 30 of the current eruption ended abruptly on August 6, 2025, after 12 hours of continuous fountaining, with lava fountains reaching up to 300 feet. This pattern of intermittent activity is likely to continue, with new episodes beginning without warning as magma pressure builds beneath the surface. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory maintains round-the-clock monitoring, with scientists ready to issue alerts and updates whenever volcanic conditions change. Webcams provide live views of the crater, allowing people worldwide to watch Kilauea's ongoing activity from their computers. Kilauea represents more than just an active volcano, it's a window into the deep processes that shape our planet. Every eruption provides new insights into how magma forms, moves, and erupts. 
The volcano's accessibility and relatively gentle eruptions make it an ideal natural laboratory for understanding volcanic processes that occur at more dangerous volcanoes worldwide. Research at Kilauea has led to breakthroughs in understanding volcanic gas emissions, lava flow behavior, and eruption forecasting. Techniques developed for monitoring Kilauea are now used at volcanoes around the world, helping protect millions of people who live near active volcanic systems. Scientists estimate that Kilauea could remain active for hundreds of thousands of years more, continuing to build the Big Island and providing ongoing opportunities for research. As monitoring technology improves and our understanding of volcanic processes deepens, Kilauea will continue serving as Earth's most accessible window into the powerful forces that operate beneath our feet. The fire goddess Pele continues her creative work, reshaping the Hawaiian landscape one eruption at a time, reminding us that our planet remains a dynamic, ever-changing world where the forces that built the continents and ocean basins continue their ancient work today. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and don't forget to explore more geological wonders on our channel.